Hey everyone, welcome back. Since my last Creepy Neighbor Stories videos did so well, I decided to do another one. I hope you guys enjoyed this one as much as the last two. And if you haven't watched those, I'll also link those in the description and in a pinned comment. And if you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe and turn on notifications. I upload every single day. And if you have your own scary story, submit that to me directly through my website, which is southerncannibal.com. All that being said, let's jump into the stories. This all started about a year ago. I'm a 23-year-old female, and I live on the second floor of an apartment complex, and I've lived here my entire life. The building is mostly compromised of families with young children, as well as married couples. A lot of the families have lived here as long as my family has, so everyone knows each other pretty well. There's only one apartment that isn't occupied by a family, but rather by a pair of brothers who always keep to themselves. One day, one of their sons, around my age, appeared out of the blue. He was really strange right off the bat. He would always wear a sweatshirt with the hood up and would run through the apartment complex to get to his apartment. I'm not really sure what his face looks like because he always had the hood over his face. He lived on the first floor, and he would often get into his place by jumping through the window. He basically did everything in his power to avoid any kind of human interaction. I didn't really mind him because I never really saw him due to my busy schedule. However, one day he started sitting on the top of the staircase that leads to my apartment. This was pretty strange because his apartment unit was on the other side of the complex, and on the first floor. I brushed it off at first, but it started happening every day. When I would come home from school, he would always be there. When my boyfriend at the time would drop me off at night, typically around 10.30 to 11, he would be there. Sometimes when I would leave and come back hours later, he would still be in the same exact spot as if he didn't move throughout the 5 plus hours that I was gone. At that point, I decided to tell my parents and boyfriend about it, and they became very vigilant. My boyfriend would park his car and walk me to my door every night that he dropped me off. Once he saw my boyfriend, it seemed like he stopped sitting on the staircase, and I thought it was over. But of course, it wasn't. Then he started waiting for me at my bus stop. The bus that I take home from school stops right across the street from my home, so it's a really short walk. One day when I was getting off, I saw him waiting at the bus stop. Once he saw me get off, he followed me into the complex and sat on the staircase yet again. He would also start following me whenever I would walk my dog. At this point, my parents were getting really upset. My mom started telling the neighbors that he was following me around. My neighbors started to make sure that he wasn't bothering me, or if I was ever alone, they would start a conversation with me until I got into my door. Then one day, I got a friend request on Facebook from this guy. Mind you, he had never spoken a word to me, so I mean, how did he know my name, let alone find me on Facebook? My mom tried talking to his father, but they would never answer the door when my mom knocked on their door. So I'm thinking, I mean, it can't possibly get any worse, right? I mean, he seemed pretty harmless, so I wasn't too worried about it. I was wrong. One day when I returned to my boyfriend's house, my mom had told me that she had something to tell me, but she didn't want me to get spooked. She proceeded to tell me that when she was walking towards the kitchen to get a glass of water, she saw something in the tree begin to move. Now, our kitchen has a huge window that takes up most of the wall. In front of the window, there's this really huge tree. If someone were to climb the tree, you could see directly into our apartment. Well, guess what? When my mom took a closer look, she realized that my neighbor was sitting in the tree looking right into the apartment. My mom called my dad over and when my neighbor saw my dad, he jumped off the tree. At that moment, I felt like my peace had been stolen from me. We filed a police report, but when the police went looking for him, he was long gone. Apparently, there were snack wrappers and a hidden blanket in between the leaves of the trees. The police seemed to think that that wasn't the first time he was in the tree. I couldn't help but to wonder how many times he saw me walking around and I had no idea of it. It's been about six months and I haven't seen him since. His father still lives in the complex but there's no sign of him. 
The police haven't been able to find him, so I have no idea what happened to him. But hopefully for me, I won't see him ever again. So this literally just happened about an hour ago, and my adrenaline is still pumping through the roof. Anyways, let's backtrack a bit. So I'm a 16 year old female and I live with my mom in a really tiny house. Our rooms are separated and mine is located just beside the dining area, while hers was near the living room. Anyway, my room is also beside the back door that leads into a patio into our backyard which is just right beside my room. Inside of my room is an air conditioning hole that has not been repaired and it's just being covered by a flimsy ass plywood. If you were to be outside, you'd be able to lift this plywood and peek right through to my room from the patio. This information is really important to the story, so just bear with me. Now, I've been noticing for the past couple of days that someone keeps flashing flashlights onto my window at 3am. I've told both my mother as well as the housekeeper all about this, but they told me that it's just the neighbor checking the chickens. They have chickens which are located near our backyard. But I mean, like at 3am? I don't think so. But anyways, I just shrugged it off and thought that it might have just been unintentional. I never really gave much thought about it because I mean, I never really met this neighbor and we've never really had an actual interaction before. One time though, I was hanging my clothes in the backyard when I saw him just staring directly at me. Like he literally just sat in his backyard and just stared at me. I got really weirded out and I was home alone at the time. Fortunately my mom arrived and I had to stop and help bring in the groceries. After those events, nothing really happened much. That is, until today. I was watching some military videos and live PD on my phone while I was lying on my bed when I suddenly hear the plywood then begin to move. I paused the video to see what was going on when someone suddenly lifted the plywood, stuck their hand in, and then opened their freaking flashlight. I froze for a second, unable to process the situation I was in. I then totally snapped and then I screamed, What the hell? And then quickly opened my phone's flashlight. I pushed the plywood out and was expecting to see someone, but the person took off. I immediately turned on the lights and went into the kitchen to grab the largest knife that we had. At this point, my heart was beating so fast that I could feel the eardrums beating as well. I was cautious to open my back door, but I did it anyways. I was holding the knife really hard in my hand. I knew that I was going to get in real danger if this person decided to screw with me for real. I stood there breathing really heavily, and all that I saw was darkness. Until I saw that freaking neighbor walking with his flashlight pretending to check on his chickens at 4am. He saw me, and then he immediately went back into his house. I was breathing really hard. I thought about barging into his house and killing him right on the spot, but I figured I'd just let the cops handle it if I ever decide to get the authorities involved. I'm still pretty shook up about it. I'm so mad. It really makes me wonder how many times he had done that without me knowing. How many times had he spied on me? It really makes my blood boil. It makes me mad. I was really scared, but I think my anger surpassed that. If this man does that one more time, I really don't know what I'm going to do. I just really hope that he doesn't. My mother and sister live in a quiet area of a small country town. Our entire family is a big lover of cats, so we've always had a lot of cats. Around May, my mother had about three of them. I'll refer to them as Cat A, Cat B, and Cat C. Cat A disappeared around the end of May. He was a bit dumb though, so we thought that maybe he got hit by a car somewhere. Cat B disappeared at the end of August. This one was very scared of cars and didn't ever go near them, and he never got very far from the house, so it was really weird to us. My mother was really hoping that someone else had adopted him by force, so that he would be okay. My sister convinced my mother to adopt a new kitten in November. We'll call her Cat D. During this very same period, there were several other cats as well that disappeared in the neighborhood. 
As I said, it's a really small, quiet neighborhood with a lot of elderly people and cat owners. However, right before Christmas, two cats from the neighborhood were found dead. And on Christmas Day, my mother found her cat C covered in blood, along with another neighbor's cat in a plastic bag in the corner of her garden. The vets were able to determine that the cats had been killed by a large blow to the head, probably from a shovel or something. Four cats were found dead and straight up missing in one neighborhood in just a few months. My mother and the other neighbors began to realize that someone was doing this to the cats, and suspicions quickly turned to my mother's right neighbor. He's a man in his 50s and he was the last person to move into the neighborhood. It's not that uncommon to see him drunk and yelling with his drunk friends very late at night. And when I was at my mother's house for the summer, he made a lot of comments about my body to another neighbor. I've seen him be very aggressive and threatening with my mother over gutter issues. Most of all though, he always insists on having a perfect lawn, except that the neighborhood cats would come and defecate on it. He once told my mother and another neighbor that he was actually going to kill all of the cats, and that was literally right before all of the disappearances started. The place where my mother found her cat see in a plastic bag is a place that can only be accessed from that neighbor's garden. And when the police started making rounds in the neighborhood, he suddenly decided to clean out his entire garage and then got rid of this strange tarp and what he had been hiding under it for a few months. He also threatened my mother, and he also hasn't spoken to any of the neighbors since. Everyone in the neighborhood really thinks it was him, but unfortunately, we have no proof. The police summoned him but can't really do anything more if he doesn't confess. My mother and sister were absolutely heartbroken when they realized that the three cats were probably killed by the very same despicable person. What really scares me though is knowing that a man like that, an absolute psychopath who can kill cats in order to get a perfect lawn, lives very close to my family that my sister walks past his house every day on her way home from school. I'm really afraid that one day he'll get way too drunk and come after my family. As for the last kitten adopted by my mother, he can't go out of the garden by himself, as my mother fears way too much for his life. Those cats were adorable. Knowing what happened to them absolutely disgusts me to no end. So to my neighbor's mother who probably did this to all of the cats, I don't have any proof that you did it, but I'm pretty damn sure. You're a terrible person. This happened about six months ago. I live in an apartment with four floors. There's a man that lives on the fourth floor. He's middle-aged. I've always only seen him around with his mom because she's the one who guides him around and usually doesn't leave him unattended. I notice that every time I see him, this man always has his eyes stuck on me. Literally, once he sees me, there's no looking away. He has the creepiest stare I've ever seen. Fast forward to the day where I felt the most vulnerable. I was walking up to my apartment complex. Usually the walk is a bit long. Once I'm a couple steps from my door, I noticed a familiar face. Yes, it was him. He was alone this time, which made me kind of scared, not really knowing what he would do. He just stared at me from the moment that he saw me to the moment I closed the door and then I locked it behind me. Five minutes pass by and I'm in my room just eating and I then hear my mom talking to someone in the living room. I walk out and it was him. Why the hell did my mom think that it was okay to let this strange guy in our house? I just really don't know. Apparently he was ringing the doorbell nonstop until he got someone's attention, which happened to be my mom's. My mom opened the door and asked what he wanted. Then he shoves my mom, pushes the door open, walks in and then points to my room, then saying, my girlfriend, my girlfriend's in there. Which was really creepy that he knew exactly which room to point to. My mom proceeded to tell him that no one was home at the moment. In that moment, my sister heard him and then walked out. My sister kicked him out of the house immediately. A couple of minutes pass by and he's ringing the doorbell again nonstop. This later goes on for an another annoying two hours. With the doorbell constantly ringing, Every now and then, my sister would look into the peephole. 
This man has his whole face in the peephole and is laughing to himself while my sister is just cursing him out on the other side. He bangs the door here and there but is constantly being creepy through the peephole. Every other time that we would look into the peephole, he either has his head down, his face in the peephole, or him walking back and forth and laughing at himself. This proceeds for a while until I call the cops. And you know how that goes. I called three times and waited for about two hours waiting on the other side of the door so this man would leave. Well, the cops didn't do crap. I haven't seen this man since but I'm still pretty scared of any future encounters. I never want to experience this again. My parents had shared custody of me until my dad started working away, so I then moved in with my mom. She lived about two hours away from where I lived with my dad in a pretty crappy suburb. Plenty of junkies and alcoholics. I was around 12 to 13 years old at the time, maybe younger. The man in this story will call Craig. Craig was my neighbor. My house was at the end of the road, then an empty house, then Craig's house. Craig's house was about the same size as ours, but he had about 10 people living there. They were aboriginals, so it's not that unusual to have so many people living in a small house. It was about 8.30 p.m. and one of my small dogs had gotten out of the house and ran down the road. So me, being the good fur mom that I am, I went out to look for him. I called him for a few times until I started to panic. Craig sat on his lawn drinking with plenty of empty bottles right beside him. I was on my lawn when he then stood up and he was in the center of his lawn, so the lawn of the vacant house then separated us. Craig waved at me and he told me to come closer, so I did. I walked a little closer and he told me that he had my small dog in his backyard and if I didn't hurry up and come get him, he was going to kill it. I was in shock, so I walked a little closer. One of the neighbors had actually saw this and they told me to get away from him. I snapped out of it and basically ran inside right into my house. What had actually happened was my dog had basically done a lap around the neighborhood and then came right up next to our house. Then he dug under the fence and into the backyard. One of the other neighbors heard him bark so she asked the others if I was still looking for him. And that's when she saw Craig trying to lure me into his backyard. So did the really creepy old man who told me he was going to kill my dog and also tried to lure me into his backyard. I hope you freaking die. So I grew up in Texas and if you know anything about living in a small town like I did, you'll know that everyone knows everyone else. And of course this was very true for my community, all except for my next door neighbors. Now I say next door, but what I really mean is that they were a ways away. We lived on a farm and our neighbors were down the creek around 500 feet. They were a somewhat mysterious group. It was a man and a wife and two kids. They stayed mostly to themselves, occasionally driving their old Chevrolet pickup down the old gravel road every week to the general store. There were a few trees between the property lines separating us from them. But inside of my bedroom, if I ever laid on my bed a certain way, I could see the far off lighting coming from their back porch. Now for the creepy part. It was 11 o'clock at night, almost midnight. Me being around 10 years old at the time, I really loved to stay up and read science fiction. So I'm sitting there reading my novel and everyone's asleep, and I see an abnormal light coming from where I would usually see the neighbor's porch. I thought nothing of it and just went back to reading. Minutes later, I hear chanting. Now I'm totally freaking out. In our area, you never hear anything like this, and I certainly never heard it before. This is the moment where I should have woken up my papa, but being a stupid kid, I ran to get a better look through the kitchen window. What I saw next totally frightened me beyond belief. Standing right there in my neighbor's yard was a group of six men with all white robes and they were circling a burning cross. The way the light hit their clothing, the embers were coming off and it absolutely terrified me. I ran to get my papa. He got quite a scare as well from me abruptly waking him up. He immediately grabbed the shotgun that he had to his side. I then ran to show him what I had found. He called the sheriff and about 10 minutes later, he showed up at our door. 
He said that he couldn't really do anything about it and they had the freedom to do what they wanted. So pretty much we had to just deal with it. It eventually stopped around dawn. I pretty much got no sleep the rest of the night or the next few nights. About a week later, we received a letter that showed up at our door. I distinctly remember that it was written in Latin. We had it translated and this is what it said. We're watching you. Always. To this day, I'm still absolutely terrified and I don't know what to do. But I'm really hoping and praying they're not going to harm me and my family. I got off work and I went to my mom's to help her and my dad set up their new Alexa TV they just got. It ended up taking quite a while because we had to run to the store to grab an adapter, so I didn't leave their house until about 8pm and by the time I got home it was pretty close to 9pm and pitch black. I have my hands full of a few things that I forgot at my parents since I stayed with them for about a month before I found my place. Anyway, I was walking up the sidewalk to my apartment when I then hear a voice calling out to me. Hey, excuse me, hello, hey. He was politely persistent. I had one headphone in and I was listening to YouTube and trying to pretend like I didn't hear him. Not to be rude because it's pitch black outside and I've been up since 6am and I'm dead tired. I don't really like small talk and I'm pretty bad at it. Eventually I turn around and we're pretty much forced to introduce ourselves. Immediately the hairs on my arms then prickle and I get this weird feeling in my gut. This guy is sizing me up. I can tell. He wants to know where I live to see if he can break into my place and rob me. I don't know how to explain it but it was something that I just know. It's not even a feeling, it's a fact. The entire time that we're talking, maybe about 10 minutes, he has his hands in his pocket, his hood up, and he keeps looking around like he's expecting to see someone. Granted it is cold but we live in Arizona so it's not that cold, but this also really puts me on edge. Then he begins asking about me. How long ago I moved in, which unit I'm in, etc. I mean, he's obviously going to see which unit I'm in when I walk into it, so I just tell him. He makes small talk for a couple of minutes with me, then he asks if it's just me. I explain. Oh no, I've got my two dogs. I then go on to tell him how big they are and how protective they are, and how they're freely roaming in my apartment when I'm at work, which is all true. He asked if I take them on walks and how often. Then he said this. How often do you leave your apartment empty? I then explained that I have to be very careful because while my dogs do love me and they act like really big babies with me, they're very protective. So anytime we go out is a pretty big challenge because I have to be careful of the people coming up to us as well as how my dogs react to them. I decide to turn the conversation around and ask him the same questions that he asked me. Which unit he's in, how long he's been there, who he lives with, etc. He seems really uncomfortable and gives me really vague answers, waving his hand behind him and then saying, Oh, that one over there. He seems pretty uncomfortable about me trying to clarify on which apartment he's in, so he tapers off the conversation and we say our goodbyes. I unlock my door, give my dogs a command to bark, which they do, and it's very loud and vicious sounding. I immediately give them love and then call my mom. I give her the guy's name, what he looks like, his vague betrayal at what apartment he's in, and remind her of our panic phrase so if I ever say it she knows to calmly end the call and send the police. Now I'm just sitting in my apartment freaking out at literally every little sound, all the while my dogs are piled on top of me while I'm typing this out. I think I'm going to call the non-emergency police and ask them to do a drive-by to make me feel safer. I'm really scared. So the story happened to me around 8 years ago. I lived in a cheap apartment complex with 3 other apartments on my floor. I lived on the 3rd floor. Of these 3 neighbors, I partially knew one of them. He was some young dude who used to work out at the same gym as me. But the one next to me really creeped me out. It was an older grumpy guy who never talked to anyone. Sometimes I would watch him searching through our trash but never found out what he was looking for or why he did it. One night at around 11pm, 
I heard some really loud noises which sounded like someone was coughing to death and it was at the grumpy man's place. I got up and I knocked on his door asking if everything's okay. I then heard someone approaching the door. The old dude then yelled from behind the door something along the lines of, What the hell do you want? He had a really strong accent so I barely understood him. I asked if he needed some help or if he wanted me to call an ambulance as I had heard him coughing through my wall. The only thing I got back was, I'm fine, screw off. I got really annoyed and went back to bed. At least no one was coughing the rest of the night. After this night, he started watching me through his window every time I went outside to have a smoke. When I finally got my degree, I decided to move back to my parents. Like I said, it was a pretty crappy place and the guy next to me really creeped me the crap out, so I just really wanted to stay out of there. A couple of years later, I ran into the dude that I used to go to the gym with. He told me that the creepy old man had actually strangled a prostitute in his apartment, and according to him, he hid the body in his closet. He tried to dispose of the body near the woods at the apartment, but he pretty much immediately got busted. I found out later that he originally came from South Africa, where he sat in prison for about 10 years. Apparently he was in for carjacking and almost killing someone. I often refuse to talk about this because I'm still shivering whenever I think back to when I lived in that crappy apartment. I'm really glad I got out of there when I did. And to that really creepy old man who killed someone. I really hope that you rot in prison and I never see you ever again. I recently bought a very rundown fixer upper in a city in a more rural area about an hour from where I live. Next door to me lives a couple, maybe in their late 40s with their two young kids. If I had to guess, I'd think one was maybe one and the other was three years old. For the first few weeks, I assumed the man was divorced as I never ever saw his wife there. Even now, I've only seen her about twice in three months. At the beginning, when I first started fixing up the house, he was your typical friendly neighbor character, offering to lend me tools and giving me slightly overbearing but really good advice. I never really thought anything of it, until it seemed I saw more and more of him with each visit. Every time I was there, he would kind of saunter over for no reason at all. We do share a driveway, so this isn't overly strange, but it often seemed like whenever I was outside, he would suddenly pop out of his house and find a reason to chat with me. Now, I'm not a flirt and I don't look like Marilyn Monroe, but I do think that he thinks I'm much younger than him, hence the slightly overbearing demeanor. However, I do really like my quiet time and privacy, and one of the reasons why I really like DIY is because I do it alone and it gives me time to think. Today, things got really weird. I've pretty much been seeing him virtually every single time that I came to the house, so I was already sort of dreading coming out to try and finish the renovation ASAP. For the very first time, I actually parked my car around the corner, with the excuse that I was leaving that space free for the gas company who were coming later that day. The car was out of sight and I'd let the gas man in quietly through the front door. And afterwards, I was just doing some more quiet work, like painting. I was already hiding from him in my own house. Then I hear knocking on the back door. I peek out a side window and I then see him there with his daughter. I'm a little surprised that he even knew I was there, but for once I decided not to open it like I usually would. I just really didn't want to be friendly with him as much anymore. He goes away. Maybe about 15 minutes later, I'm happily painting away when I hear another knocking on the back door. I ignore it yet again. Then he comes around to the front door, rings the doorbell once, then immediately begins to pound on the quite fragile door. I could absolutely scream at this point. It was the kind of bashing that said, I know you're there and I will not be ignored. Really freaking aggressive and quite alarming. So of course, I now have no choice but to answer the damn door, since it really did sound like he was going to break it. He's there and without his daughter and he invites me over for some lunch. Well, this is a first, and though I know it might be rude to say no, I made the excuse that I was vegetarian and that he'd probably made a meat dish, 
which he had. He was frowning and he said all this weird crap and it really set alarm bells off in my head. He's never invited me to lunch before and even though he had a young daughter with him, I just felt like it was some kind of a weird trap, at least in my head anyways. Then he said while still frowning, I'll see you later. And not in a casual see ya if I see ya tone, but a I plan to see you no matter what kind of way. He actually nodded to himself as he said it. So, I don't really know if he's just overbearing or he's being a total creep. All I know is I definitely feel creeped out. I think I'm just going to do my best to continue avoiding him, and I really hope he'll leave me alone. My children and I live in an apartment complex. A refugee family has moved into a unit at the end of the hall. There's four adults and three children. My daughter is about six years old and has made friends with the young girls in this family and she spends a lot of time playing with them. There's a bit of a language barrier with the adults, so we usually communicate with them through the children who then translate for us. The adults speak some English, but not very much at all. I'm not sure how to handle the situation since I can't really speak to the parents directly because of the language barrier. So here's what happened. A couple of days ago, my daughter was outside playing Barbies with the girls. They were sitting in the grass nearby the girls' patio. One of the adult men came out and looked directly at my daughter and then said, Nice, beautiful, with a really creepy smile. So, maybe it was just a compliment, and if so, there's no harm in that. But, well, yesterday my daughter and I, we rode a bus home from a shopping trip. When we exited the bus, she ran ahead of me since I had packages that were slowing me down. She was probably about 20 feet in front of me when the same man was driving down the road. He saw my daughter and slowed down, creeping along next to her with a frighteningly creepy grin, nodding his head. It was the way that a grown man lustfully looks at a grown woman that he wants to pounce. It was absolutely sickening the way that he was looking at my daughter. I was literally watching him the whole time, and without taking my eyes off of this creep, I called my daughter's name. Startled, he looked up at me and then suddenly sped up and continued down the road. He was so focused on looking at her that he didn't even notice that I was not too far behind her. She's only six years old. I'm beyond creeped out and absolutely disgusted over this. I'm not even sure what to do other than keep my daughter away from that family. I mean, I can't really make a report until he does something like trying to lure her. I've had an intense talk with her about stranger danger and what to do if he approaches her. Maybe I'm overthinking this, but that gut feeling of fear and disgust that I got when I saw his facial expressions, well, it's telling me he didn't have innocent thoughts when he was looking at my daughter. I honestly just really don't know what to do. I'm going to do my best to keep this creepy man away from my daughter. If he knows what's good for him, he'll stay the hell away. 